Hi, I'm Andy Auer. Um, welcome to the Village Doll Shop. Uh, we want to have a program today about Marklin. Uh, Marklin is a tin toy company from Germany. Uh, we started about 1859, so we're, it's looking at 160 years of tradition. Uh, they're most well known now for their tin trains, uh, but in the late 19th century, uh, the quality of Marklin is regarded as the best of any toy maker of all time. Uh, their tin plate trains, boats, cars are some of the most desirable collectibles uh, in toys. But what we want to talk today about is more of the uh, doll related playthings that Marklin made. So come with me and we're going to show you a display of doll carriages, beds, and cribs. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, conventioneers. This is Teddy. I just want to introduce you to our shop dog. And I'd like to talk to you about some of my personal collection of Markman carriages and accessories. I've collected them. As long as I've collected dolls, I've found um, one probably 40 years, my first one about 40 years ago. And I've collected them ever since. There's a you can see a wide variety of colors and well textures too. They, when, when you first started collecting Marklin, uh, did you know it was Marklin? No. And what no. did you what did you think of it? Actually, I was told they were French carriages. Okay. And they were made a lot of the collectors, but again, this is you know years, years ago, ago before the knowledge came. Right. Um, doll collectors found them and they're so beautiful and. They thought they were French because traditionally, you know, some of the finest, prettiest things in the doll market at that time, particularly, were French. But it's kind of the reverse in toys, where the German manufacturers made some of the most beautiful toys. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I probably discovered, you know, five years later that they were Marklin, even though my original one was Mark. Mm -hmm. I still couldn't figure out what it was. What the Mark was? And we'll show you the Mark. It's <laughs> yeah. coming up. But let, let's take a quick overview of how great they look with dolls. And we purposely put them all in this case with German dolls, not French dolls. Just to be, uh, you know, a lot of people <laughs> like to put them with French dolls, but and we, we want to show, <laughs> and we do that ourselves, but we want to show that how great they look with uh, German children. Well, once again, there's German dolls that were also thought to be French when I first started collecting, <laughs> yeah. so why not do this? Yes. <laughs> Um, this one looks like a brew. <laughs> that one looks like a Steiner. <laughs> They're all German. <laughs> that one looks like a brew, and there's some Jamos up there, and but and there's another little brew down here, another little brew there. So you can see that the German manufacturers and copied. You can see how the Marklin carriages and beds bring so much color to a display, and uh, they were well known for their paint finish, which is enamel. And the brightly enameled tin plate toys look great with, a, with as a display. So, like I like to say, they are eye candy. Yes, <laughs> they are. Eye candy. Um, we're well, going to go over and give you a brief rundown first of carriages, uh, and we, or excuse me, of beds and cribs. Uh, we love to put babies uh, in them as display. So Bonnie, come over here and I'll show and you. And as a matter of fact, Bonnie, I put all body babes in my beds. <laughs> <laughs> come over here and I want to show you some uh, examples. Uh, I want to start with this bed, which is not Marklin, start right off. And the reason why I brought a non-Marklin piece first is to show you this is sort of um, normal construction of a tin plate toy. And why Marklin is so sought after and so appreciated is their excellence in construction. So it, in this toy version, it, it's just made like a toy. But when you really look at a Marklin bed, it's made like a bed. Now, it has a full spring under there, just like a real bed. And the white. Yeah, and it's made uh, of uh, tin plate and enameled and hand striped. Um, a lot of detail and construction for just a very simple play thing. So a lot of the beds you find uh, in this size, there's also a smaller size and then some grand larger sizes. Uh, they also made them in blue and pink and 
doll collectors love the blue and pink ones. It's great to display a, a baby or a, a child in bed uh, and also to display a larger doll tending to a, a baby or a child. They also made a full brass version and you can see the brass version has the spring underneath. So they made a brass bed. Now these were made around 1900 and like what the carriages we talk about, same thing around 1900. And I, I left the crib over here as well as from one over there, just like it. What's great about this is they could have just made a crib, but they made a fully functioning crib with a lift up side. All the details are just like a real crib, but in miniature and really ornately. There's just more detail in Marklin Toys than any other toy manufacturer of its time. Now, I have this example here before we go back over to the carriages to show you how fine of a toy maker they are. Now this is from the late 19th century and it's so incredible because it's fully operational. It has opening doors, it has glass windows, um, they've faux painted the carpet and the floor of the carriage even the horse is made out of tin. So I'm trying to show you how elaborate Marklin would go to uh, make a play thing. This was uh, way more than just a child, uh, child's toy. They obsessively went through the details to make them as close to miniature as possible. Um, and briefly cover this great little flower wagon. And while I have it here, I want to show you what the mark of Marklin is. I think you can see it there. It is a shield and an M and a G. It's Gebruder Marklin. And most of the toys, a lot of the carriages you find are not marked, but some of them are. You'll see that mark and that's easy to, uh, to see. So that's the mark of Marklin. So let's go back and talk about some details with Becky. Can we start here? Yes. Okay. Um, these are in, these two carriages are very interesting because they have um, what we call like a waffle. Um, it's like a pressed waffle weave, simulating the wicker carriages, you know, from the turn of the century, like the. What's the name of that company? Haywood Wakefield. Haywood Wakefield. So, and you can see the amount of detail this carriage actually has. Um, do you want me to uh, I just want you to show the back and forth. Now, interestingly, just because we're concentrating on this carriage, this is the only carriage that I ever found with the original occupant inside. And that's celluloid. tied in, and it was celluloid, and it was tied originally with the silk ribbons. And you can see all the fancy silk. There's silk lining and satin, you know, in the interior, blue to match the blue interior, white to match the white, and then gold trim. So. And that carriage comes with a pink interior and a blue interior. And actually it comes with almost a creamy, oh, creamy yellow. yellow too. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Oh, and I have some green, like a minty green. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. there's a lot. <laughs> Come so, over here for a second. Eddie wants Bonnie. to show you something. So she's showing you what we call a waffle, like this. And the reason why that is, is it's really faux wicker. And I brought you over here to show you that basically what they're trying to replicate is the look of a wicker carriage. And that's what that heavy embossed tin plate shows. It's it's just brilliant Marklin. You know, it, it was it was in the details. So and we'll get into more of the details as we go. We'll go back to Becky over here. Okay. Um should we show we forgot one of the beds. Oh yeah. This is an interesting little bed. Do you want to talk about that one? Well, it's got embossed sides and all hand painting. And then you can see on the headboard, they used a decal to have uh, that floral uh, splash up there. But uh, they applied a lot of castings. And you can see on the top of the headboard how they applied a casting. And they even applied a casting here. They soldered it to the tin. And uh, all these things were very ornate details that... Uh, are quite special for something that's so small, and that's why people appreciate them so much in comparison to other tin toy makers of the time. Um, it's beautiful the way this is shaded. I don't know how they did that. Is that 
Uh, airbrush. Airbrushing. Mm -hmm. But you can see that the shadowing of the, you know, the blue actually sort of fades and out. That, and that red pinstripe is a hand pinstripe. So. Okay. You did show them that silk. How I showed silk, them the silk hood. And they have a wonderful mechanism for making them fold. And I'll show you that. Do you right think? Right here. Here's uh, without the silk a top. skeleton. <laughs> so it folds completely. I mean, it's an amazing amount of work and hinging just for a carriage. So while I have this here, one of the things that people need to uh, keep in their memory is that when they're looking at carriages, what, what really defines Marklin are these split wheels, these split spoke wheels. So you'll you, when you see this split spoke wheel, it's definitely a Marklin attribute. And the other thing that Marklin carriages almost always have are wooden handles instead of a tin handle. So if you see a wooden handle and split wheels, but it's not marked, you're probably, well, yeah. you are looking and at a Marklin. a pretty Marklin. scrolly undercarriage. Yeah. yeah. Chassis. The, the chassis have a lot of really detailed work. Show them a stroller. Oh yeah. Okay, here we have a stroller with a variation so that you could sit your doll up. I mean, a lot of times the carriages, the dolls are hidden with um, sunshades, but she's out and she could be pushed along. She's also got the wooden handle. Now the stroller does not have, at least that size stroller that doesn't stroller have- That stroller had non-split wheels. But it's still super heavy. And they're super um, detailed. It has a little bit of that waffle. It has the pinstriping. It has, you know, it looks like you could collapse it, but of course you can't. Uh, and so typically, details. just like some of the other carriages, Marklin made it in two sizes. So you have this size here, and look up here, Bonnie. Smaller size there. Same same type stroller, but in a smaller size. Yeah, they frequently made mm -hmm. big and little. Which and we'll, we'll show, show you carriages. And, and this is one other version of a stroller that I wanted to show you. And what's interesting about this one is they even have an adjustable... And that one's even bigger yet. An adjustable huge. foot. And you can see the, the wicker embossed waffle, we like to call it, around here. Yeah. So, <laughs> And actually, it has sort of a... That's a different... Yeah, a different arm. Yeah. There's a lot Much of differences fancier. in this one. The entire thing is embossed in the back. I don't think I've ever had them in the same place at the same time. And what's crazy about this is to make this, they would have this waffle pattern. They would have to solder this wire in, and then these scrolls were had to be bent in shape and then soldered on top of that and then enameled over all that. I'm always amazed by the details that they went through to to for just a small girl's plaything. I think it's wonderful. Well, just to think about that and, and the German ingenuity, this is probably about a seven inch Sonnenberg. They bay, and just when Andy's talking about small details, that has a jointed knee with molded and painted boutines which in that tiny size is pretty incredible and perfect for this Marklin stroller. Now, another thing that Marklin strollers are just perfect for are leather babies. <laughs> I think that's why I really started collecting them because I had a couple of leather babies. And the that's French- That's a whole other program. <laughs> well, yeah, that's French. I shouldn't, I, I included French leather babies, but they're so cute, I couldn't resist. Um, now, this is an interesting- Show those. Oh yeah, stroller, mm -hmm. and this is waffle. But I guess you, the little girl would stand here and push the hand, or push it, yes. or pull it. Push she, it. She would push. She it. could push it along. Oh yeah, that's cute. That's cute. But that's a very rare form of a Marklin carriage. Now the Even, the baby can and they sit. still made wooden handles. Yeah, they still made wooden and then handles. The split wheels. Everything. And then it's got the waffle and. And see the see they even put in remove the leather baby for a second. They put in this tie in in the back so you could tie your child in so it would be safe. Oh, I should tie the leather baby in. Yep. <laughs> but that's right, they don't break. The leather baby has her own little monkey. Show them some of those nickel plated chassis ones right next to it. Oh yeah. Now actually very rare in Marklin carriages is non pastel colors. Oh, you can see almost everything else is pastel except for these two. And this is um, a nice, deep, rich, uh, sort of British racing green, I guess that would be, <laughs> with pinstriping. This is 
This is quite more of a the, hunter green, maybe. Oh, well, that's British Racing yeah. Green. But what's interesting is they have nickeled wheels instead of the painted wheels. And this one is one as well. Now, this one's even more elaborate because this is all embossed. Yes. And I brought this cow. Over. And that's the embossed mark. Yes. This is just like the first one I owned. Yep. And it had that mark the whole time. And I didn't even know it. So there's the mark you can look for in your carriages. I brought over a copy of the 1906 catalog. And this shows these nickel uh, chassis ones. This is the one that we just showed you in the original catalog. Uh, a couple of the other ones are there. You can see from the original catalog, <laughs> this is a great piece for doll collectors. It's, it's a teeter-totter that you could tie dolls in on each side, and uh, they're beautiful. Hard to find. It's I would perfect. like to say that all these carriages are pretty difficult The condition, uh, to too. Mm -hmm. The condition. Now, this is... Where do you want to go? Oh. Well, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. This is a really pretty, just fanciful one um, with, again, the original satin hood you know pretty sweet little pin uh pinstriping on that one um a lot of them have more color to them like this art and gold in the back you see that all that painting on there with the gold yeah. and the and i i'd like to awful. say you know like this pink one she showed you hand painted hand striped but uh this one um they use stencils to create all that gilded work and but it's pretty fancy. And the enamel work is incredible. Yeah. And look at the sort of roping detail here. And that one has the brightest nickel carriage of all the ones we have. That really shows you how great the nickel carriage and is. And that one has a diaper pail, too, or the yes. diaper compartment. Yep. Or does that have a trap door or not? No, it doesn't. Okay. okay. Um, now, we want to show you, like, sort of the one of the most popular yeah. uh, and legendary Marklin carriages is this pattern. And they made it in two sizes, nine inches long and 11, 11 and a half inches long. Depends on how, how far these uh, acorns come out. And it's this Art Nouveau floral pattern. And they come in blue like this and uh, pink. And I, I got to say at this point, if, you, if you've been to the Village Doll Shop or you see it here in the videos, we base the colors of our shop <laughs> on a Markland on, carriage. On, on a Markland carriage. So we really love these colors. Yeah, look around. <laughs> yeah, this is a classic carriage. And you'll see one uh, in pink coming up, right? Right, there. there's two in pink. There's two in pink. Because mm -hmm. pink is my favorite color, yep. so I have and, two in pink. And doll collectors love that pink carriage and the condition of both of those. And we have two here because I wanted to show you they have these really uh, ornate castings. And you see the uh, cast acorn finials. All this is applied uh, to the tin carriage. And like this one doesn't have that same shape at the top, but it's, it's original. It was made that way. They just didn't have this continued embellishment. This was a two-piece casting. I mean, it's just amazing to me that they went that far. And all this wire filigree on the in the in the gallery around the carriage, it, w way too many details for a toy. It's just amazing that anything like this was ever produced. Can you tell I like them, Becky? Oh, I know. Well, we both love them, so it's pretty easy. Now we were telling you thing, but... about the nine-inch size. So then you have the eleven-inch size big boys up here. These are these are the big boys, and there's really two they... two shapes in these classic carriages. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to point out that they have, you don't notice it right away, but that has the, that should have a hood. The hood is missing. This one comes with a parasol. Yep. And it has a completely different arched um, back. Yeah. See how the gallery there. arches down yeah. and it has all the, the, the. Yeah. That one, you can see the Germany on the bottom of it too. You can yeah. see the mark. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty amazing. Yep. Um, and I, and I obviously put bears and, you know, cats and dogs in all these displays, too, because they all work well together. Now, this is probably the last carriage to show before we just head into Honestly, the left. Couple of well, this one is interesting because of the wire work. Yeah, it has the waffle pattern and then all that applied wire work over top of it that's all gilded. And then it has matching white wheels with gilded, gilded tires. I wanted to show you this down here really quick. If anybody out in the world, um, it's very rare to find, but they made a Marklin carriage that had a mechanical wind-up mechanism underneath it with this little platform. Now, this is the version of it without the platform. 
but they did actually make a walking doll carriage. There it is in the original catalog. I want to show you a few other things for the people who like miniatures. Um, Marklin made bathrooms that were fully functional. So you have this uh, uh, painted enamel bathroom with a porcelain sink, a beveled glass mirror. Details are incredible. You would fill this, this is a reservoir up here. You would fill it with water and you would have operating um, sink. And then we have the same thing, but in a bathtub. Can you imagine giving your doll a bath in that? It's incredible detail. <laughs> <laughs> you put the water in up here and you would have running water. And look at this. Stopper. It has the original <laughs> stopper. It's just absolutely incredible. I pulled. Is this where you put the water? Yep, you put the water up there. This is a reservoir tank up to this point here, and you would drain crazy. it in the back. Mm -hmm. I'll try that later. Yeah, <laughs> you want to take a bath? Yep. Um, I brought these out. These are great, high quality German carriages, but I wanted to show you non Marklin carriages. They're wonderful enamel, uh, wonderful details, but they're not Marklin. These are probably Bing, uh, typical. They go great with dolls, too. Uh, same time period, 1900. We have a great, uh, this is Bing's version of the waffle pattern. Similar to that here in the shop, in the case. I wanted to show you that really quick. Uh, one other thing I wanted to show, talk to Becky for a second. <laughs> no, just talk to Teddy. He looks great. Do you want me to talk about the chandelier? That's what I'm getting. Oh, that's okay. So everybody loves these miniature chandeliers, but I wanted to show you one little factoid. Now we all know now, that these were made by Aaron Hardin's son uh, in Germany, uh, Armelou chandeliers. But I, to show you how technical Marklin was, it, it, you know, electricity was new around in 1905. This is 1905 catalog, and it shows Aaron Hardin's son chandeliers fully electrified. You bought it as a kit, it came with a battery, and you could have electric lights in your in your dollhouse via Marklin. Marklin made live steam, electric. They had, they were using um, wind up motors, uh, steam engines, all kinds of things to power their toys. It was a very elaborate system. Uh, you know, uh, just to give you um, some idea of how sought after they are, there are some Marklin toys in the world that are uh, fully, like here's a, <laughs> I'm gonna show you. <laughs> No. <laughs> now this is a reproduction Marklin uh, carousel that would have been driven by a steam engine. Now this is not the real one. If this was the real version of this, then when I say real, I mean... This is a reproduction. Th yeah, this would have been made originally around 1900, 1905. This is a reproduction from a few years ago. The real one is over $150,000. So if you have one of those at home, please let me know. Uh, <laughs> What else do we have? Anything else? I think, I think we've, we've covered, covered a lot. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to ask in the comments and we'll try to answer them. But I hope we have infused in you the same passion for Marklin tin accessories and doll accessories uh, that, you know, that, that we, we have. have. I think, I think Bonnie should just pan over maybe just to see, because all the dolls that are standing are all Sonnenberg. I just, when I started to think about what I was going to put with them today, I thought I would give a nod to Germany and put Sonnenberg, what I call Sonnenberg Bay Bays, with them. So I just wanted to give you a quick scan. And you can just see them. Just close up, and we'll be anxious to hear what you think and yeah. any comments you may have. Back up a little and bit. Teddy would like to say yeah. goodbye because he probably won't be appearing in another video anytime soon. <laughs> because <So>. he's <laughs> always looking at Thanks for visiting the Village Doll Shop. Come see us in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. <laughs>